Hey everybody, it's John here from Vigimiac.com. Here we are today back in Jurassic Park Episode 4, grabbing the Finding Nima achievement. This is done when you escape out of the tunnels. It's uh, Gary and uh, Nima. You are going to have a conversation tree, and the point of this is you need to find out about Nima's past. And the best way to do this achievement is to always pick the left option. If you do that, you shouldn't uh, miss it. So uh, every time there is a uh, dialogue option, you want to make sure you pick the left one. And uh, this is going to go on for about 7 minutes or so, so I'll let you watch it in case you uh, need a visual reference. But uh, if you uh, just always pick left, you should be good for the achievement. And uh, that's it. I love the water. I would swim in the ocean so far. That's why my father called me Nima. I see now. You and your family used to live on this island? My family, everyone, my whole tribe. This had been our home for thousands of years. I could go anywhere, run in the jungle, climb the trees, these monsters. There was never anything like them on this island before. It was all very peaceful before Injun bought the island from Costa Rica. What does your name mean? It means little fish. You know, like uh, the ones that have so many colors. I didn't realize this island had been inhabited before. InGen moved your people? They promised us homes and medicine. Education. They didn't keep their promise. I guess from your point of view, they did. But the homes were slums and the medicine was extra or half-used or contaminated. We had schools, but no teachers. The island is so different now. I know the island. It's part of me. But when InGen came to the island, Important men from Costa Rica came and asked my father to go back with them. They wanted my father to make a good impression so that Costa Rica could ask InGen for a good deal of money for our island. When he was in Costa Rica, he was asked to cut his hair and wear a suit so that he wouldn't seem simple to the InGen people. Spared no expense. Hammond, the man who made all this, he runs InGen. It's something he always says. He'll spend whatever it takes to make the park a success. So, he spent it all on the dinosaurs, not on my people. I felt as I feel now. My father was different. I knew him, but some part of him had been lost. I'm sure it was a very difficult time for your father. I know he wanted what was best for our people. He was too trusting. They took advantage of him. He sounds like a brave man. Were you too close? When we were on the island, yes. We were always together. My father was an Awa, a spiritual healer. He sang for Sibo, who created the Earth. He was very important to our tribe. But after we left the island, he would not keep up the old traditions. He was always unhappy. What is Sibo? That mountain there. It is like a house, my father said. My people believe that the animals of the world built it. Before Injun, and my father and I would go to the ocean to fish. When I would swim in the ocean, my father would say, Nima, little fish, little fish, do not swim so far. I cannot catch you so far out. When Injun came to move us to Costa Rica, I became very angry with my father. Whatever he would tell me to do, I would refuse. But he would never be angry with me. He would say that I am a fish who would never eat the fisher's bait. He was right. To me, everything had a string attached. You remind me of Jess. I mean, that's how it used to be with us before the divorce. I'd take her to the museums or to the zoo. She'd always climb up onto things, you know, such a climber. She can't not climb over things, into things. Climbed into a tiger pen once. <laughs> with a live tiger. But not anymore? No. Things haven't been the same since the divorce. Do you still blame him for everything? No, I have forgiven him. I know to blame Injun now. He would always remind me of my stubbornness. I think I believe that's how I must always be. You know, no ties, no temptation. But then I had Atlanta, my Mariquita. She is almost of an age where she will outgrow my protection. Young girls on the streets in my neighborhood 
They get snatched up by local cartels, run drugs. Or worse, some just disappear. Now there is no choice. Everything I do, I do for her. Now I am the fisher, and at the same time, I have come to a way in my life where I must always chase the bait. You named your daughter Atlanta? Yes, it's a beautiful name. I named her after the city. That's where I will take her after this job. That's a good strong name, and a good city. I want for Atlanta to be free. I want for her to have opportunities that I didn't have. I just hope I can be there for her the way my father was there for me. She can be stubborn like her mother used to be, and refuse the fisher's bait. I think I know now it's a good way to be. I think that my father believed that too. Just changed my life too. Choose my second, second wife, second daughter. Apparently I'm the genetic carrier of rebellion because both my daughters got it. I worked so hard to protect Jess and keep her out of trouble. What about you? Did you turn out so good because your parents kept you out of trouble? Me? I was a little hellion myself. Uncontrollable. <laughs> it's in my genes. Hmm. Oh, now you know this is different. Still, one thing Jess really hasn't had in her life is a present father figure. Well, you've turned into quite the capable woman. Your father must be very proud of you. Thank you, Jerry. I... I should have realized that sooner, though. I'm sure he knew. Nima, look, I... What is it? I'm sorry about what InGen has done to your island. This isn't the way things should have been done. I don't blame you, Jerry. You're a good person. All right, after you make the uh, final choice and the uh, scene ends, you uh, should get the gold medal and the achievement for a 30 gamer score. And that's all there is to it.